Welcome guys. In this video, I will be sharing with you guys a very important and exciting news related to Workhorse Group and the United States Postal Service delivery contract. After analyzing the latest information, I am really excited about Workhorse stock. I believe that Workhorse will be able to win this huge $6.2 billion contract. When I will show you the reasons why I believe Workhorse will be able to win whole or at least 75% of the $6.2 billion contract, I am confident that you will agree with me 100%. But instead of just talking about the USPS contract, I will also update investors about the latest happenings related to the Workhorse stock. And to attract potential new customers, I want to give a brief intro of Workhorse stock to get them acquainted on the topic so they can hop in. So first, I will discuss what is Workhorse and why are we bullish on Workhorse stock. Also, I will try to alleviate a very important concern of investors, that is the poor price performance of Workhorse stock after the earnings announcement. But before going into details, I would request you to like this video to make it accessible to more investors like you and many others. Also, subscribe to my channel and check out my latest videos related to Tesla, Apple and Neo stock to find juicy buying opportunities. Workhorse Group is an automobile tech company focused on providing drone integrated electric vehicles to the last mile delivery sector. They design and build high performance battery electric vehicles. Workhorse also develops cloud-based real-time telematics performance monitoring systems that are fully integrated with their vehicles and enable fleet operators to optimize energy and route efficiency. Investors are highly optimistic about the Workhorse Group winning the USPS contract worth $6.2 billion. This contract will be huge for Workhorse given its market cap of just $1.5 billion. If they manage to get this contract, it will not only prove to be a one-time big order, it will also cement their position as a major electric vehicle manufacturer in the US. So stakes are pretty high for both investors and the Workhorse Group itself. Now let's discuss why the price of Workhorse stock is falling. Investors might be concerned about poor earnings announced by Workhorse, but to be honest, no one including me and many others were expecting Workhorse to announce stellar results. For example, read this. Workhorse traded down Monday after the company reported earnings. That's the wrong reaction, however, because earnings for the startup don't matter yet. Workhorse is trying to disrupt the commercial shipping industry by replacing gasoline and diesel power delivery vehicles with all electric vans. Like so many electric vehicle startups these days like Nikola, Hillian and Solo, Workhorse is pre-sales, meaning there isn't a lot of revenue yet. So investors should not judge Workhorse based on its earnings report. You can imagine the upside potential of Workhorse by looking at Nikola's stock price. Nikola announced the worst possible result in the last quarter, and yet it is trading around $40 because of order book optimism. Now imagine Workhorse getting the USPS contract. This last quarter has negatively impacted all businesses due to the persistent pandemic, but Workhorse has hit some significant milestones during the previous quarter officially began production and delivered three C-Series electric step vans to Ryder, became the first and only medium-duty battery electric vehicle OEM to receive approvals from both the Environmental Protection Agency as well as the California Air Resources Board, permitting the company to sell vehicles in all 50 states. This has become one of its best competitive advantages regarding the market which will allow them to further distance themselves as the first movers in the last mile EV space. With the approval, Workhorse is the only US all-electric OEM in the last mile delivery vehicles niche to complete this testing. Reaffirm previous production and delivery target of 300 to 400 vehicles in 2020. One more important thing to note is that Workhorse strategic partner Lordstown Motors Corp, of which Workhorse owns 10%, announced a merge with Diamond Peak Holdings that will result in LMC becoming a publicly listed company on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol RIDE, RIDE. This merger is likely to be completed in the fourth quarter of this year. Workhorse 10% ownership is estimated at approximately $160 million based on a $1.6 billion valuation. Workhorse will receive a royalty fee for each vehicle sold by Lordstown Motors. Now having discussed the basic things, let's talk about the USPS contract. 
After presenting my arguments, I am confident that you will agree with me that Verkhorst will be able to win a whole or a major chunk of the contract. House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee passed the infrastructure bill that gives the USPS $25 billion to modernize the postal infrastructure and operations, and $6 billion of the funding is designated to go towards buying a new delivery vehicle fee. So USPS is in final stages to award a $6 billion contract to replace its old fleet of boxy delivery vehicles. The Moving Forward Act would require USPS to replace its fleet of Grumman Long Life vehicles with at least 75% electric or zero emission vehicles. Read this again, because this is a very important point to note. Just read this again and I will tell you after why I asked you to read it again. The Moving Forward Act would require USPS to replace its fleet of Grumman Long Life vehicles with at least 75% electric or zero emission vehicles. Now read this. The bill would also require the agency to make at least 30% of its medium and heavy duty vehicle fleet electric or zero emission by 2030. And by 2040, the bill would prohibit the postal service from buying new non-electric or non-zero emission vehicles. Now consider this. Among all the bidding companies, USPS has the most environment friendly vehicles. No other company is offering USPS fully electric vehicles. Workhorse vehicles match all the above mentioned requirements. There were mainly four bidders looking forward to winning the contract, but Mahindra withdrew its bid to supply delivery trucks to USPS. Now, only three bidders are left. Let's analyze the other two and see if they fit the requirements of USPS. The other player that we can easily eliminate from the race is Turkish bus manufacturer Karsan, which is working with Michigan-based Morgan Olsen. Because chances of awarding a $6.2 billion contract to a Turkish joint venture is close to zero, because the contract is almost surely not going to be awarded to a non-American manufacturing company, considering the government administration is voicing strongly on bringing back manufacturing jobs to the country and protecting the data of US citizens, this will automatically eliminate Turkish Carson from the race for the contract. Also, the US has very strained diplomatic relations with Turkey, so Carson is out of the question. Now, we are only left with a joint effort between Ford and military vehicle company Oshkosh. But the important thing to note is they are offering vehicles with an internal combustion engine. Remember the contract at hand calls for 75% of the USPS fleet to be electric or zero emission vehicles, mainly because of two reasons. One is to have a less environmental impact, less pollution, and less climate impact. Two, last mile delivery is the expensive part of all logistic deliveries. So having electric vehicles with less power costs is essential to having less costs for the USPS. This will mean the direct elimination of Ford from getting the whole contract, since they are offering a gas-powered truck. This makes Workhorse the only all-electric vehicle manufacturer bidding for this contract. Workhorse vehicles have half the maintenance costs of the current USPS fleet. The USPS vehicle replacement contract decision is due later this year. If the company gets the contract, the upside could be huge. Hopes are high for Workhorse on winning this contract and supplying USPS with over 150,000 electric vehicles. Workhorse will gain at least 75% of the $6.2 billion contract. This contract is likely to be awarded by the end of the government's fiscal year, which is on the 30th of September. If the contract is not granted in this fiscal year, USPS could lose the money for this contract. Meanwhile, as delays pile on, the USPS continues to spend massive sums of money to keep the LLVs in service. Government figures show that the average work hours spent to maintain the vehicles rose by 6.7% since 2018, and the USPS spent $1.2 billion on maintenance in 2019, an increase of 2.5%.